Hello and welcome to today's daily vlog from Kimmel Bay Church. However you're feeling today, I pray that, that this little moment that we've set aside together may be a blessing to us all. Today I'm looking at my favourite psalm. The psalm I've chosen has always intrigued me because it's so different from most of the psalms in the collection. Like many of the psalms in, in the book, it's written by David, but it isn't linked to a particular situation. Something from his life, like being chased by Saul or troubled by enemies or confession of sin. The great preacher Spurgeon said of this psalm, it's one of the shortest psalms to read, but the longest to learn. And I know what he means. I even got to the point of wondering whether I was tackling too much by trying to share this psalm in the vlog. Those of you who've seen the introduction on Facebook will know that I've chosen Psalm 131. Very short, but very profound. So let's read it together. My heart is not proud, Lord. My eyes are not haughty. I do not concern myself with great matters or things too wonderful for me. But I have calmed and quieted myself. I'm like a weaned child with its mother. Like a weaned child, I am content. Israel, put your hope in the Lord, both now and forevermore. It's incredible to think that here we are treated to the reflections of one of the most powerful men on earth in his day. He would be constantly called upon to consider great matters of state and make judgments about others. So, so what was he thinking when he wrote this psalm? Comparing his way to being that of a young child sitting quietly with its mother, content to know it's loved and cared for and anticipating the future calmly. I think David's letting us into the innermost sanctum of his heart and sharing a pri his prized possession, the secret of living in this world and not going mad. It's not about existing, it's about thriving. But at the same time, he's stretching forward and glimpsing the very nature of the message of Jesus. And so this psalm becomes prophetic and way before its time. Jesus was asked by his disciples, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? I bet they had some ideas in their heads of it being the prophets or the heroes of faith. And we know that James and John had great aspirations for their place in the kingdom. But let's hear what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 18, verses two to five. He called a little child to him and placed the child among them. And he said, truly, I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever takes the lowly position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. I can only imagine what the disciples thought, and my guess is it wasn't. It's just what I was thinking. But you know, it was just what David was thinking a thousand years earlier. Living's a complex thing, isn't it? And it doesn't seem to get any easier as the years go by. Just as we imagine we've got life sorted, things creep in and devastate us. Wow, I didn't see that coming, we think to ourselves. For some of us, the first thought is to pick ourselves up and dust ourselves down and start all over again. We should be able to do this, we say to ourselves. For others, it's to crawl into a corner and hope that it will all pass us by. But David said there's a better way. He says that he's renounced thinking he can sort things out or worrying about the what ifs of life. Instead, he goes to God, who is the one who is waiting for him. There's no problem for David that the picture he has of this instant is of God as a mother with a young child on her knee. 
how powerful this image is. For mother is generally the one to whom a child will go in every situation and feel safe and cared for. No longer a baby screaming for attention, the wean child can talk to his or her mother and also learn that they can hope for good from her. Jesus endorses this view with his teaching about greatness. Greatness, you see, is only found in a right relationship with God. Thriving as a person is only possible when we have a true perspective. God is God and we are his creation. We're not off a conveyor belt, all the same, hurriedly prepared for who knows what. We're fearfully and wonderfully made and loved. Loved with a love that means that even though we turn our back on God, he has stepped in and sent his son to give his life a ransom for us. No mother can keep a wriggly child on her knee for long. The child will squirm until it's free. And God doesn't force us back to himself. He just makes the offer. I want to help us to return, but we need to want to be with him forever. David, you see, had to still and quieten himself. It took great resolve to become the little child sitting on, on God's knee. We're conditioned by the world to stand on our own two feet. But then the world in which we live is no great guide. The world says the Bible is countercultural, the Lord of glory becoming a servant and dying for sinful people. But this psalm reminds us that it is the world that's got its wrong. God is the one who can be concerned for great matters and things that are wonderful because he is God. We are the ones who can put our hope in him. And even if it doesn't seem to work out straight away, we can continue to hope now and forevermore, for he is God. And so I seem to have come full circle back to my favourite hymn that I began these summertime vlogs with. Jesus, I am resting, resting in the joy of what thou art. And that's no surprise, for this is a lesson, as Spurgeon says, that takes a life to live and learn. I need to sit with God as a young child sits on its mother's knee and continue this la lesson to my life's end. And so let's finish as a with a meditation and prayer with verse three of the hymn. Simply trusting thee, Lord Jesus, I behold thee as thou art, and thy love, so pure, so changeless, satisfies my heart, satisfies its deepest longing, meat supplies my every need, compasseth me round with blessing, thine is love indeed. Thank you, Jesus. Help me to keep my hope fixed in you. So stay close to Jesus. Don't try and struggle through it all on your own, but take his love and his hope into today. See you very soon. Goodbye.